All right, so let's get into making our procedural couch. So I want to build this whole couch based off of a little tiny grid that we're going to use as our floor plan. And the divisions in that grid are going to change based off of, you know, the scaling of the grid. We're going to want to be able to stretch the grid out and have it change the number of divisions that will correspond to the cushions and everything like that. So let's start with the grid. I'm going to hit the tab key and type grid. And let's just jump inside here and hit spacebar F to frame it up. You can see we've got a uh, size 10 by 10 grid that has 10 rows and 10 columns. And those correspond to the number of divisions that we have here. So if we reduce the rows and columns down to two by two and maybe change the size of the couch to uh, two by one. So two by one in the size, two by two in the rows and columns. You can see that we get this nice little rectangle right here. Now, if I go over to this column slider and increase that to a value of three, you can see that we get two polygons here. So uh, that corresponds to these three columns here. We've got this line here. That's first column, second column, and third column. So if we look here now, if I wanted to make a three-seater couch, let's just, for example, kind of make the size of this three. So I'm increasing the size to a three by one couch, and we increase the number of columns by one, you can see that, that we get four columns here, and that kind of looks like you know roughly square pieces for a three-seater couch. Now, if we wanted to actually make it so that if we have our manipulator selected here and we're you know kind of dragging and sizing our grid like so, we could have it automatically update these divisions uh, procedurally for us using a relative reference in a very simple expression. So we know right now, if I bring this back out to the size of about three, we know right now that roughly when we have a size of three, we want to have four columns. When we have a size of two, we want to have three columns. So that basically means that we want our columns to be whatever the size is plus one. So very simple. All we do is we go up to this parameter where our size is X parameter here. And we just right click on that and say copy parameter. So just right clicking in this little field and saying copy parameter. Now, if I come down here to columns, I can select uh, the text in here and right click and say uh, paste relative references. And you can see it's written in this little expression. This little expression says CH. So CH means look up the channel that is called size X. So if I go up to the size parameter and hover over, you can see that this little black pop-up window uh, comes here and it says the parameters are size X and size Y. Those correspond to these two things right here. And so it's going to grab that size X parameter, that first one. It's just referring to the string of the name of that. And if I come over here to columns and click on it, click back and forth, you can see that it's toggling between showing me the expression and showing me what that expression is evaluating to. And so you can see that that number matches size two, columns number two. So if I actually grab this and increase it to a value of three, say three in size X, and we look at it, you can see that we've got now three columns here. These actually look rectangular and we want them to be squares. So we can actually add one to this size X parameter. We just put a plus one in here. And now we've got our three pieces that are roughly square. And now when I grab this and size it, however, you can see that it's constantly making the right number of divisions that it, does, that it needs to kind of keep these roughly uh, square in shape. So that's a little handy tip about uh, relative references. Now, this is about as simple as it gets in terms of relative references and channel expressions and stuff like that. But um, this is really the tip of the iceberg. It's so powerful, the things that you can do with this type of ability in Houdini. And not only that, but it's right here inside of the parameter. A lot of 3D softwares, they have this kind of relative referencing thing going on or their expressions editors, they're all over the place or they're hidden or they're buried. Houdini makes it right there in front of you. All you got to do is just write, type things right into the parameters and you're making your adjustments like so. It's awesome. All right, so I'm going to set this back to a two by one and center it as well. I'm just going to hold down the control key and middle mouse click on center to kind of put that back where it was. So now let's start building out our geometry. We've got our base uh, polygons here and we want to just maybe do a little bit of extrusion to make the base of our uh, couch. I'm going to call this the base. I don't really know what it's called, but it's basically the part that goes between the legs and the cushions. This is the thing that holds the cushions off the ground. And we're just going to make that by adding a little of extrusion here. So let's start on a poly extrude. 
and wire that in, wire the grid into that. And let's just select our manipulator here. Um, by You can hit the enter key to get into that, or you can click that little button over there. You can see we get this red thing, I'm just gonna pull that up. And let's give it a distance of 0.15. That'll serve as the base of our thing. I'm gonna also output the back. So I'm just gonna tick output back on the poly extrude. And now that we've got this, we can start building off of it. So this is gonna be our base, the base of our couch. And we're gonna to wanna to get arms and a back off of this. So let's start with the back. Now I could just do my back selection like this and delete that and say delete non-selected, but this is doing what we were talking about before. This is a non-procedural selection. Instead, let's use a blast, but what we're gonna do is make our group selection using the group node. Let's start on a group node and we're gonna select by normal. So I'm gonna untick the base group and tick keep by normals. And let's select primitives facing in the negative one direction at a spread angle below 90. You can see we've isolated those back two faces here. So now I can name this group something meaningful like back and we can blast it away. So I'm gonna throw it on a blast. And blast is really what I use to just isolate little sections that I wanna work on. So let's select our back group from the drop down here and I'll say delete non-selected. Now we've got this nice back here. So the next thing I want to do is actually extrude this back. So let's start on another poly extrude. And we can just wire that in here and uh, pull this back a little bit. Just give it a little bit of thickness. This will serve as our back thickness here. And then we just need to kind of stretch it out. So let's actually add this back face on our poly extrude. And we can make another group selection. We can grab these top two faces and just pull them up. So let's throw on another group node. I just wire that in here and we're going to select, we're going to disable the base group and enable keep by normals again. And this direction is going to be set to zero, one and zero and spread angle below 90. And we are just grabbing those top faces now. And now what I can do is uh, let's name this the back top. So in the group uh, field, the group name, I'm just going to name that back underscore top. And then I'll throw down a transform node and the transform node Right now, by default, we'll just grab everything and move it. But if I specify the group back top, you can see that it's only moving those top two polygons that we specified. So if I go and zoom out a little bit here, I can actually bring these two together. Now let's look at them together. I'm gonna bring my uh, back nodes off to the side and leave this base poly extrude kind of in line with the grid. And then I'll throw down a merge and we can wire the poly extrude and the back together, kind of see them together. Now we're sort of kind of building our couch and it's sort of arriving in this merge right now. I'm gonna throw down a couple nulls just to keep things labeled nicely. And we'll um, label the first one on the left. Uh, we'll put this null right here and call this the base. And I'm just going to make another null and call this the back. So we've got the base, we've got the back, we're merging them together. Let's make some arms now. I wanna make arms in a similar way. I'm actually gonna start with a poly extrude and we're gonna blast off this side as well as this side. So let's use this group technique we've been talking about again. I'm gonna throw it on another group node and let's wire poly extrude into that. And let's first select this polygon that's facing off to the right. So in the positive X direction, I'm just going to disable the base group, go to keep by normals. And I'm going to select it facing in the positive X direction. So one, zero, zero, and spread it angle below 90. And you can see we've got that one face selected there. Um, and let's just name this something appropriate. We'll call this the uh, side group. And then uh, now we need to get the other side selected. So let's create another group. I'm just gonna actually hold down the Alt key or the Option key if you're on a Mac and drag that down so it makes a copy of that node. And I'm just gonna wire it, wire it in back to back. So we've got one side node here wired into another side node and nothing's changed because it's just basically doing the same thing twice. Um, but here I'm gonna set the direction uh, instead of the positive x-axis, I'm gonna set it in the negative x-axis. And you can see now if you look at this other side, this other face has been selected. Now, what happened to our other one? Now, see here, if I look, I only have one polygon in my group. 
just like I did up here. I've only got one polygon in my side group, but it's this one over here. And so when I do this node down here, it selects this other face. And that's because of the default behavior of the group node is to replace the existing group. So that basically means that it doesn't matter if this side group already exists, we're redefining it entirely on this node, which means that we're going to totally disregard any other um, polygons that were in this group. If they aren't satisfied by the criteria that we set here, they're not going to be included. We could do instead of replace existing, we could say union with existing. And now you can see that it includes that other node from our previous selection. And if we look at our info, we've got those two nodes together. So that's kind of an interesting way that we can combine our different group nodes to maybe select by based off of more than one criteria using that union with the existing will combine them for us. So now that we have our arms, let's do a similar thing that we did before. And I'm actually going to just use what we did on the left here as a cheat sheet. We're going to blast that group. So let's blast that away. I'm going to throw it on a blast and we're going to blast away the side group and we're going to invert it by saying delete non-selected. So now we just have our side group. Next thing, we're going to poly extrude. So we're going to poly extrude. Wire that in here. And let's we'll pull that out a little bit. We'll say output back. Now let's pull it out a value of 0.15 again. And then we're going to grab the top of each of these arms and translate them up a little bit. So let's sort of another group node. And we're going to say this is going to be the side top group. So I'm just giving it a name of side top. And then unticking base group, ticking keep by normals, direction is zero, one, zero, and spread angle is below 90 again. And so we've got that defined. Let's throw it on another transform. And here we'll wire that in. And if I just grab that transform and bring it up, you can see it's grabbing everything. Let's select our side top group. So it's just grabbing those top polygons and let's merge that in with the rest of our couch. And you can kind of see that it's starting to come together. Now we can grab this transform and kind of size in our arms along with the size of our back and so on. And I'll just throw it on a null right here to sort of label the fact that I've got these arms that I've dealt with over here. Let's call this arms. And take a look at this. So this is looking good so far. Let's see how the proceduralism is working. Now we have this grid that's going to change uh, poly counts. Now if I drag it a little bit, whoop, you can see there that it creates that extra division in our grid and it carries through the entire system. So we can actually just keep changing the size of this and it keeps updating those divisions on all of our objects just because we're making these group selections in a more procedural way than just grabbing them by hand. So that's looking good. Let's set the grid back to a two by one and center it. And the other thing I just wanna do before we move on to a different part is maybe a couple things. Let's add some beveling to this to make it feel a little bit more squishy. But also this corner is really kind of bothering me. I actually don't want this to be offset like that. I really would like it if the arms would stretch all the way to the back of the chair. And this is where we can implement our first match size node. So I'm going to go over here and give myself a little bit of space above my arms. Now I'm just going to drag that down. And we're going to use the actual combination of the, the base and the back to define how we're going to stretch out our arms to get them to fill all the way to the back. So I'm going to merge the base and the back together. Just throw it on a merge node, grab the base and I'm shift selecting the back node and just dragging out. And you can see those two wires are coming and I'm just going to pop them into the merge here. So we've got our base and our back together. And then I'm going to throw it on a match size here just before the arms null. And if I wire in the merge to that match size, you can see that I'm just going to template the merge so that we can actually see uh, what it's doing. So if I toggle this match size on and off, you can see that it's centering the position of our arms to the rest of the couch. That's fine for right now. We don't really want it to move up. We certainly want it to be centered along this axis. So we can actually just tell it not to justify Y. So see so justify Y here, we'll just say none. So that keeps the couch arms on the ground. Next thing we need to do is just scale it to fit this 
dimension of the couch. So this is the uh, Z dimension of the couch. Now, if we do scale to fit by default, uniform is going to kind of shrink them in and that could be something that you want. But in our case, we kind of want to keep them on the outside. So I'm going to untick uh, uniform scale. And this is going to actually just kind of stretch them out uh, along all axes. And I only want to stretch them in the Z axis. So I'm going to untick uh, scaling in X that kind of pops them back out to the outside where they're supposed to be. And I'm going to untick scale Y and that'll keep them sort of the right size, the right height that we specified before, but they're also going to stretch all the way to the back of the couch like I was hoping for. So if I toggle that on and off, you can see that the arms are staying relatively in the same place, but they're stretching all the way to the back of the backrest. Nice. So now that we have this, let's just add a little bit of beveling to everything. And we're going to do that by throwing down a bevel. Poly bevel here. Just wiring that in after the merge. And we can just increase that distance a little bit. And maybe just add one division to make it a little bit rounder. I'm going to turn the template flag off on this merge so I can kind of focus on this. And I might just bring the exclusions up. So here under the exclusions drop down, I'm going to say ignore flat edges. And that's just going to not divide this middle edge. There's no reason to be adding more polygons or more divisions to it. So there we've got a nice kind of squishy looking couch like so. We can kind of adjust how squishy it is. But for right now, I'll just kind of go with like a modern rounded rectangular look like that. Nice. So we've got the base of our couch kind of set up. I'm going to call this the um, the frame, for example. I, I don't really know what this part of the couch is, but the part that doesn't have feet or cushions on it, I'm calling it the frame. So I'm going to tab key and type null, and we'll throw that down after the poly bevel, and I'll just call this the frame. So we're good with that. And then next, we'll go in and make the uh, cushions. 